you have the fire tube in the bottom of this that heat provides heat to heat this whole vessel, the whole tank. Okay, and this thermocouple right here is the component that measures how much heat is in there. And in order for them to sell this oil, it has to be 163 degrees. Okay, so they have their set point in here is somewhere above 163 degrees. Okay. So if, if at any time that senses the heat is less than 163 degrees, a couple things happen. Number one, this is our pilot solenoid, this is our pilot line, and this is our main line. If, it, if it's below 160 degrees, it opens the solenoid, because it's wired back to our box, opens the solenoid, lets gas into the pilot, and then through this wire right here, there's an ignition coil that provides spark, and that lights the pilot. We have gas and spark lights the pilot okay a few seconds later you still need more heat so this is the main line main pump main burner it will open up and let gas into the main and it's right next to the pilot and the pilot then lights the main burner okay? and it will burn until it will burn on high fire until this temperature this thermocouple senses a temperature at their set point once it hits that set point, once it goes above that set point, closes this solenoid, which cuts off the gas to the main burner, and shuts off the main burner. The pilot is still burning, okay, because this solenoid is still open. 10 degrees higher is where they have it set here at, uh, you know, if, if they run it at 160 and, and then this will be set at 170, when the tank hits 170, if it continues to heat up until it hits 170, then this one shuts off and it kills all, of, all the fire inside the tube. And it will stay shut off until the whole vessel cools down to below their original set point, plus a dead band, if they have a 5 degree dead band. So if they have it set at 160, it will cool down to 155, for example, then it will start that process over again. Send spark, open the pilot, light the pilot, light the main, and it will just go through the process until, you know, it will keep the, the temperature of this tank between X and X until they're done. Well, they would have had a pneumatic system in here, which is an air-driven system, and there's no control on the on the pilot at all. It uh, it would if it ever blew out, it would just keep dumping fuel in there until they realized it was out and they come out and relit it. Okay, um, and and then if they were to light it, they'd have to light it by hand. So they'd take this cap off and take a piece of stainless steel tubing with a rag on the end, spray it with WD-40 and light it, and then stick it in that hole to light, relight the fuel that's, that's spewing in there. That, although it can be done safely, it often is not, and can cause some very bad things to happen if not done perfectly. So It requires a person to be here to do it, too. Yeah, that's true. If, if this, this is where there's an office, so it's close. But if you're out at a wellhead, clear out in the hoorahs, then you may not know that's hoorahs. <laughs> may not know that's out for two or three days, and it will just be out spewing our gas for three days until that, until you somebody goes out to check it and make sure it's lit. Where if this system's there, it will detect the fact that the flame's gone, and you know light itself within you know less than a minute after it detects no flame. So that's the advantage.